right, let's bring in Steve Lavin, former UCLA and St. John's coach. Steve Lavin, our college basketball analyst for FS1. So everybody's mad at me, and I said this morning, if I'm on that committee, there's plenty of little guys getting in, but if I have to choose Syracuse or Valparaiso, and I know Syracuse has a Hall of Fame coach, went 5-5 five and five against the top 50, and I'm looking at both resumes, I'm like, I'm taking Syracuse because Bayheim's a difference maker. Am I off my rocker? Well, and also the fact that they're challenged themselves in now what appears to be the strongest conference in the country in the yeah. ACC. And so which, if, but the, the, the selection committee didn't like the Pac-10, mm -hmm. and it did like the Big Ten, and it did like the ACC. So the committee thought that's a really good conference. Sure, and we've seen that before where a team comes out of a conference with a 9-9 nine and nine record. You go back to the Kemba Walker team, uh, one of Calhoun's UConn, yeah. national championship runs. Uh, they barely got in the tournament. Uh, they had to win, I think, five games in the old Big East and then went on to win six more in the NCAA tournament, and yet they were on the bubble coming down that final weekend before Selection Sunday. So uh, even Arizona in 97 was a team that struggled in Pac-10 play, uh, didn't have the conference tournament in 97. Um, they got hot, and ironically, Lou Olson's only national championship came from a team that wasn't a high seed mm -hmm. uh, but got hot at the right time of the year, and I think we're seeing that with Syracuse. Syracuse, the only 10 seed to make the Final Four. Um, Bayheim because he plays the zone, and for some reason there is this kind of affinity to bash the zone. Um, but he recruits for the zone. His wings are long. You faced. In fact, I may be nuts here. But when Bayheim was out this year, you had so much respect for him. Didn't you pick St. John's to beat Syracuse when Bayheim because Bayheim was out? Yeah, actually, you could see that coming because Syracuse was a bit out of sorts, and uh, Mike Hopkins, uh, a young coach who's a rising star in our business, but he was put in a tough situation uh, in terms of having to take over in the middle of a season. Uh, and then, of course, Coach Bayheim came back. And really his stewardship, I think, has been the difference. And uh, Mike Hopkins is going to lead that Syracuse program uh, when they pass the baton to him and uh, will be an excellent coach. Uh, but I just thought that Syracuse was a bit out of sorts. And I knew in terms of St. John's uh, in the garden, an opportunity uh, to knock off Syracuse when they were at a vulnerable time. So you could see it coming. What about Bayheim in the zone? I mean, listen, NBA guys like him. Krzyzewski could choose anybody. They chose Bayheim. He's not a guy that's known as a film wonk. You know, he's kind of like one of those, like, Krzyzewski wants his assistants yeah. after games to go watch film all night. Bayheim's not into it. Um, like, what, what, what makes Jim Jim? Well, a couple things. He has an excellent feel for the game. And that zone in particular, it's not a traditional just two, three zone, as you say, hands up, Harry. Uh, they're working in it, and they can make adjustments. Uh, they can collapse it, as I've said before, uh, like a Venus flytrap, but it can extend – uh, and actually get into passing lanes, and you'll see them trap out of it at times. So they give you so many different looks, and what it does, it discombobulates uh, opponents. Uh, they get passive. They start standing around. Uh, they settle for jump shots, and uh, what's effective is it levels off dribble penetration. Uh, it limits post catches. Uh, he keeps his bigs at home at the rim where they can be goalies or protect the basket, where they can rebound effectively. He keeps the guards out front. It even... Uh, converts well to offense because the guards are already out top and they're able to fill lanes and get down the floor off of their defensive stops for easy scores and transition at the other end of the floor. Uh, but again, yesterday uh, he springs the press and they come from 16 down. Uh, so there's a flexibility in his thinking, uh, but he's an example of, you know, teach what you know and know what you teach. And uh, that's an important concept. Sounds simple, but it's profound. Uh, he understands that zone as well as anybody in the history of basketball. And it's really become a key to their arsenal, to their attack. Nova faces Oklahoma. Let's talk Buddy Heald. Now, Buddy's going to go to the NBA with the three balls, and he's going to score points. I think he's limited. I don't think he's a great passer. I, I think he. I don't think he's a willing defender yet. Um, when you and I told my audience, you didn't see Porzingis in the tournament. You're not yeah. watching ben, ben Simmons or Chris Dunn. Let's not go crazy. There's a lot of great players that aren't in this tournament. They're called Europeans. Uh, they're you know. So I like Buddy Heald. Um, just, just a, you're a college coach, but what do you make of his game, which is low on passing, not big on defense, but how does he fit? Well, for starters, we talked about this last night. You know, who you play with is really important. And the fact that uh, he has that three-guard attack, you know, uh, when you look at Cousins and Woodard, uh, they complement him very well. Yes. When you get three players out there on the floor that can pass, catch, 
create off the bounce, shot make, play make, and they also have continuity in terms of playing together like musicians. He's a senior. Yeah, and the, lo- and the longer you play together, last year they went to a Sweet 16, they came back this year to take the next step to the Final Four as they have. So he's dynamic, and I think what makes him most impressive is the fact that in crunch time, uh, he wants the ball in his hands. And when teams are, you know, preparing uh, to play Oklahoma, clearly he's got the bullseye on his chest. Uh, they're targeting and they're they're building their defenses to shut him down, and yet he's still getting 25, 30, 35 points a night uh, under duress, you know, and uh, under different types of defenses, triangle and two, box and ones, uh, you know, double him, don't let him get the ball back when he gives it up, and yet he continues to step up and knock down big shots. So I think that is what the NBA will look at, not just his size, his length, his ability to finish, um, the variety of ways that he can score, but also uh, in late-game situations, he wants the, the fact ball. that he wants the ball. Think about this, Steve Lavin joining us. Think about not the teams. I'm just going to name the coaches left. Roy Williams, yeah. Jim Beheim, Lon Kruger, rebuilt three programs, and Jay Wright. I mean, like, I know the players are great. But it's harder to coach than ever because the great players, it's an apartment complex. They're looking for a condo. They're, they don't last. We have four legendary coaches. Yeah, and experience is so important as you get into the single elimination, the NCAA tournament. Why? Uh, because they've been there before, and so I think uh, younger coaches that get in, naturally their vital signs are going to go north, uh, <laughs> You know, just like a race car driver the first time you know, he's in the Indy 500 or an astronaut the first time he's on a mission to the moon. Uh, the vital signs, the adrenaline are going to be pumping. When you're more experienced and you've been there before and faced those conditions on a regular basis, you're going to see things with clarity and make better judgments in terms of adjustments. Uh, your feel, your sensibilities have been informed by decade after decade of being at the game at the highest level, being in the game at the highest level. And so you'll see uh, the the judgments uh, that these coaches make uh, that give them an edge. Tom Izzo, clearly in March, uh, even though he b- got bounced this year, early in the tournament, uh, he's one of those coaches as well. It's like a jockey, too, how to close, how to finish not only the season but in the NCAA tournament and how to finish out in a game. Uh, That's important as well because teams are a reflection of their coaches. Yeah, they really are. Steve Lavin joining us, UCLA St. John's head coach, FS1 college basketball analyst. When, 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 Did you see Ben Simmons play at all? Uh, not live. Not live. One of the few I didn't get to see live, but plenty of nights in studio here watching the games. Okay. The... Uh, what was your interpretation of him? You know, I like him as a prospect. Uh, it's tough at that age when you don't have the surrounding cast and you've got the expectations that come with being considered the best player in the country. And really, that means the world uh, in terms of a prospect. And, you know, whether he's one or two or three, he's in a handful of players are going to get uh, considered, you know, to. Uh, to be a number one pick. So I like his unselfishness. There are times where I'd like to see him, I'm sure as his coaches felt, impose his will on the game at both ends of the floor more in terms of wanting the ball like Buddy Heald. And yet uh, the fact that he doesn't force, I think will be a good thing when he gets to the next level because he plays with some intelligence and with some purpose. And when he has better players around him, that willingness to pass will make him a better teammate and more difficult to defend uh, as opposed to a guy just wants to gun it, just pump it every time he catches the ball. They're easier to defend. Uh, it's the guys that actually make good reads and decisions that are harder to defend uh, because they see the doubles. They know when to give the ball up. They know when to go to work in single coverage and take advantage of a matchup, whether to take someone down low or to step them away and drive them off the, off the bounce. You know, this, this, you're, and, you're Steve Lavin joining us. This is a theory I have. If you ask players who they love to play with, it's always magic. It's Steve Nash. It's generally people who share. Jason Kidd. Jason. John Stockton. Who don't, who's a great talent they don't love to play with always? Kobe, Carmelo, James Harden. Buddy Heald's a shooter. I think over time, 12, 15 years, um, I think just as a father, as a businessman, as a basketball player, there is a greater harmony in an organization like Steph Curry, there are nights he wants to feed Clay. I see Buddy Heald as a guy that has a little James Harden or resentment. Resentment can crop up. Like Ben, I, what you're saying about Ben Simmons is why I always love Magic. Everybody, not everybody loves to play with every great player, Steve. Hey, when you coach, go through your entire career. Who did your players love to play with, either St. John's or UCLA? Name a player that was universally, summarily loved. One would be Cameron Dollar. You know, he stepped in for Tyus Edney with Tyus Edney was hurt in 1995 well. and, and led 
us to a national championship. Uh, I think Earl Watson, uh, even though there were times because he had such a forceful personality as he grew into a leadership role, there were times he was telling his teammates maybe things they didn't want to hear because it got a little uncomfortable. That's what uh, leaders but that's do. what leaders do, and it's why he's the head coach of the Phoenix Suns and the youngest <laughs> coach in the NBA right now. He was born to lead and born to coach. Um, you could see that as a point guard now as a head coach in the NBA. Uh, but I think ultimately there was a respect for Earl uh, because of his work ethic. And so uh, teammates will accept that leadership uh, if you're not a fraud or a phony. In other words, if you're backing it up with your own actions and you're selling out for the team and those things we talk about, the front of the jersey being more important than the name on the back of the jersey. And it sounds like coach speak or cliches, but at the highest level of sports, at the end of the day, when talent is equal or somewhere close to being equal what separates are these intangibles of leadership and uh when you watch ben simmons togetherness you see a and share. Those lines. yes yeah exactly all right if i say to you carolina syracuse steve lab it kind of feels like carolina like they're just they got more long more length more and in particular in a one and done situation you know i think if it was a best of five it would be clear that North Carolina, like the NBA or best of seven, has superior talent. They play with a greater margin for error. And this particular team is kind of galvanized because they were called soft. Uh, they were called out. They stumbled some, stubbed their toes. And I think Roy Williams has done a masterful job of kind of getting this team to step up, play with a chip on their shoulder, a little bit of an edge that we hadn't seen in prior years. And uh, that's why they're poised to cut down the nets. They play with the greatest margin for error, the length, the balance they have across the board. Nova, Oklahoma. Um, that's an interesting one. I'm going to go with Villanova just because they're such a galvanized group. Uh, they're so tough defensively. I think Jay Wright started to mix in his own, borrowing a little bit of Bayheim or Raleigh Massimino of the past. And you mentioned earlier about that zone. It's interesting how many coaches from a John Chaney, Raleigh Massimino, Tarkanian with the Amoeba, Lute Olsen as well, uh, at times in his career, played a lot of zone defense. We're back to flexibility. And Jay Wright this year in sprinkling in that zone, even though they hang their hat on tough defense, man-to-man, -man, and rebounding and taking care of the basketball, um, he also shows some flexibility offensively, giving his guys the green light, the confidence, uh, similar to Krzyzewski, that ability to really infuse confidence. His kids are never looking over their shoulder, worried about coming out because they missed a shot. And that's why you're seeing a guy like Chris Jenkins step up. I think he's been a key dimension to Villanova now, punching through and going to the Final Four. Uh, we knew about Archie Diacono, uh, but Jenkins has really become a threat offensively and stretching defensively, the ability to hit threes and backing people down with that little turnaround this jumper is, on the base. Steve, this is going to be the classic high-powered offense and Nova's will on defense. It's a little Oregon Auburn, or you know, it's Alabama against the high, Johnny Manziel. Yeah, is it Oklahoma can light it up? Villanova can shoot. Uh, Steve Lavin joining us, former UCLA and St. John's head coach. We're out of time. That was 13 minutes of raw insight from you. Really enjoyed you, you it. Have, Always a pleasure. You have a really good radio voice. Christine, have you oh, noticed that? I appreciate that? that. He does. It's got that raspiness to it. Wow. This he, is good. You guys are good for yeah. my self-esteem. I'm turning the corner at 51, so you need a little ego boost, Aww. a little self-esteem boost. I appreciate that. You don't look 51 voice. either. Oh, wow. You I'm don't. hanging out some more here. This is great. Can you say How just... much more time we got? <laughs> why Why are you back there? I don't Can you just say that? We wonder that a lot. Yeah, I just want you to fair. say LegalZoom.com. Oh. Say that. It's one of my advertisers. LegalZoom.com. Should I do it naturally or yeah. emphatically? How about or? both? LegalZoom.com. Now, like wow. you're an announcer. LegalZoom.com. I like that Whoa, better. Whoa, you yeah. could make money doing no voiceovers. Kidding. Wow. I'm in the right town. I've got some time here between, yeah. you know, now and the start of next season. I'm hanging out in Venice Beach. I'm doing yoga, having a couple uh, avocado turkey sandwiches on nine grain with some, uh, some mm. Brussels sprouts. Oh, it sounds like you guys or maybe could it's be alfalfa great sprouts. I think it's alfalfa sprouts. We're yeah. kind of from the, he was Haight Ashbury. I was the Pacific <laughs> yeah. Northwest. We're both green. Very you love bay. sandwiches. No Birkenstocks on today, though. But. <laughs>